do you see my screen is it showing the presentation ah good morning everybody today we are going to discuss a very important topic it is actually foreign body of the esophagus and the procedure we used to remove these foreign bodies so i have organized this entire topic for the day under five subheadings namely introduction a small talk on anatomy and then let us discuss on the common causes and various types of foreign body then we will speak something about the investigations and then i'll be showing you the exact steps you follow when you perform esophagoscopy to remove the foreign body so let me go to the introduction so commonly patients with uh, foreign body in the food passage actually today's topic is going to be only on the foreign body in the food passage not in the airway airway i think they have completed yesterday isn't it okay now invariably the patient will give out a history of accidental ingestion of the foreign body if the patient happens to be a child the mother or the caretaker of the child will come out with the history and foreign body ingestion is actually common in children than in the old because children are very very curious and they want to taste uh, whatever that gets into their hands so it's very common in children particularly the toddlers toddlers are very curious and these patients they come to us with difficulty in swallowing since there is difficulty in swallowing the difficulty is so much that they won't be able to even swallow the saliva so it causes a drooling so when you see a small child who is not swallowing the saliva and who is having drooling excessive drooling you will have to suspect the presence of foreign body and then if the child has fairly grown up or if it is in the as in the case of adults they will definitely complain of pain in the throat when they attempt to swallow and foreign body ingestion is actually very common among psychiatric patients because they don't know what they are up to and these are the dip, uh, persons who are difficult to manage because they will live with this foreign body for ages they won't come and complain and it is going to be a incidental finding in almost all these patients unless and until they manifest with overt symptoms these patients won't complain of uh, foreign body or they won't even give any history of ingestion of foreign bodies and then prisoners are notorious enough to uh, hide uh, things inside the prison in the piriform fossa in fact when we regularly go for prison duty when we examine the throat of the prisoner we always ensure that we compress the neck so that whatever is hidden in the piriform fossa will come out into the throat in fact i have managed to take out lot of uh, hidden money coins uh, drugs including beads Uh, cut cigars all these things will be conveniently hidden uh, it will be wrapped in plastic papers and it will be hidden in the piriform fossa so uh, prisoners and smugglers they have a uh, this tendency of hiding uh, their uh, uh, goods inside the piriform fossa so that is one of the uh, things you should not forget as i have been telling epidemiologically children make up nearly 80% of the patients with esophageal foreign body the common foreign body esophageal foreign body in a child happens to be could be coin it could be battery it could be button battery it can be needles or these are the common household any common household item which can be littered on the floor can be uh, put inside the mouth by a child and then food impaction is very common in adults for example mutton mutton piece can get uh, stuck inside the throat or can get stuck in the crack of pharynx and invariably food impaction is commonly seen in patients with malignant stricture or 
malignancy of the esophagus. Food impaction is commonly seen in elderly individuals who are suffering from esophageal malignancy. In fact, the diagnosis of malignancy per se will be highlighted only after the uh, attack of foreign body impaction. So, when we do a routine esophagoscopy to remove the foreign body, uh, presence of malignant stricture or presence of mass inside the esophagus would be an incidental finding and we go ahead and take a biopsy. This has happened to me on a large number of occasions and in elderly, dentures are very commonly uh, seen. These dentures, they get stuck in the cricopharynx. So, dentures are very dangerous to remove because they are very large and they cause excessive spasm of the cricopharynx muscle and attempts to remove denture can traumatize the esophageal mucosa. So, denture removal is a little bit tricky, but dentures are very common foreign body in old individuals. And then fish bones happens to be the next common foreign body in adults. Presence of fish bone is next common foreign body seen in adults. So, what are all the problems with uh, foreign body in children? For example, if the foreign body is sharp and metallic, it should be removed within hours of ingestion because it is likely to traumatize the esophageal mucosa. If the esophageal mucosa gets traumatized, it is, it is likely to cause mediastinal infection or mediastinitis. So, sharp metallic foreign body like safety pin or pin, all these things or metal, uh, sharp metal objects should be removed within a couple of hours of ingestion. And then button cells are highly notorious because they release uh, toxic fumes, they release acid into the uh, environment and it can cause necrosis of the esophageal mucosa, traumatizing the esophageal mucosa, it causes ulcers of the esophageal mucosa. So, all button cells should be immediately removed as early as possible. In fact, preferably within the first couple of hours of ingestion and uh, incidentally studies reveal that I have already told you during my previous slides that toddlers are more frequent patients with history of foreign body ingestion. So, it is commonly seen between 6 months to 3 years when the child is actively moving around the house and commonly foreign body of the cricopharynx is seen in children belonging to the socio lower socioeconomic strata because in uh, middle class and upper class, the children are taught to avoid putting objects into their mouth or into their nose or into the ear. They are diligently taught. In fact, they are not left alone. Somebody is there to take care of them. So, uh, foreign body ingestion is common in children belonging to the lower socioeconomic strata. And almost 90 percent of these foreign bodies are gastrointestinal in nature and they pose a great diagnostic challenge. If it is going to be a pediatric age group, a high level of suspicion, high index of suspicion should be there to identify these patients with uh, foreign body obstruction in the cricopharynx area. So, incidentally, the, may, the history will be given by the mother or father or parent of the child or the caregiver of the child and these children will be incessantly crying and they will not eat they won't drink and the classic feature happens to be presence of drooling of saliva from the mouth because the child won't be able to swallow the saliva. Now, let us go to the next the basic anatomy. So, the length of the esophagus in an adult is around 20 to 25 centimeters and if you want to say it in inches, it is easy to remember, it is roughly 10 inches long. So, I repeat again, the adult esophagus length is around 20 to 25 centimeters and if you want to break, uh, convert it into inches, it is it's little bit easy to remember, it is around 10 inches long. It extends from the hypopharynx up to the level of the stomach. The extent of the esophagus is it extends from the hypopharynx and up to the level of the stomach. The narrowest portion of the entire uh, gastrointestinal tract happens to be the cricopharynx area. 
I repeat again the narrowest portion of the entire gastrointestinal tract happens to be the cricopharynx area. Supposing if the foreign body crosses the cricopharynx, you can be rest assured the foreign body will pass into, uh, into the entire gastrointestinal tract and it will come out through the fecus. So, it is always better the, your commonest site of uh, foreign body is going to be in the cricopharynx and which happens to be the entry into the entry into the esophagus actually the entry point into the esophagus where the, there is a sphincter of muscle around that is the cricopharynx muscle so that is the area where the foreign body commonly gets impacted so esophagus has a inner mucosal layer lined by squamous epithelium and then just outside the mucosal layer there is a muscle layer and this muscle layer is made up of inner circular and outer longitudinal fibers. So, the muscle layer of the esophagus is lined by inner circular and the outer longitudinal fibers. The upper third of the esophagus, I repeat again, the upper third of the esophagus has voluntary striated muscles. So, the entire swallowing, esophageal phase of the swallowing is initiated by the voluntary striated muscles present in the upper third of the esophagus and the muscles of the lower third of the esophagus is involuntary in nature. The muscles of the lower third is involuntary in nature and inside the esophagus I have already told you cricopharynx happens to be the most common site of impaction and there are other areas where the esophagus is found to be narrow. So, what are these normal narrow areas of the esophagus? These let me tell you foreign body has a tendency to get lodged in the narrowings in the esophagus. The first area of narrowing happens to be the cricopharynx and the next area of narrowing happens to be the compression caused by the arch of the iota. So, the arch of the iota compresses the anterior wall of the esophagus and thereby it causes a narrowing there. So, the next common area where the foreign body can get lodged is the area where the iotic arch crosses the esophagus that is the second narrowing. The third narrowing happens to be the area where the left main bronchus passes over the esophagus and causes a little bit of compression. So, these are the three areas and this area the main bronchial compression of the esophagus lies close to the lower end of the esophagus and so that is the lower esophageal sphincter. So, the lower esophageal sphincter is another narrow area where foreign body can get lodged. So, let me repeat again the common areas where foreign body can be lodged in the esophagus is at the level of the cricopharynx which happens to be the narrowest area of the entire gastrointestinal tract. So, you can safely assume if the foreign body crosses cricopharynx it will manage to cross the entire extent of gastrointestinal tract and it is likely to come out through the normal fecus, fecal material the next day or the day after. And the next common area where there is a certain amount of narrowing in the esophagus due to external compression is by the arch of the iota. So, that is the second area where foreign body can get impacted and the third area is actually the lower esophageal sphincter where the esophagus manages to get into the stomach. So, that is the third area of narrowing where foreign body can get lodged. So, actually I have already told you about the common areas of uh, narrowing. You should be seeing my cursor. This is the cricopharynx opening. The moment you put the scope, you push it to the cricopharynx, the cricopharynx muscle relaxes. Here the foreign body is actually a mutton piece which can be seen at the low opening of the cricopharynx. And this is actually the area the compression is caused by the aortic arch which happens to be at the middle of the esophagus where the aortic arch when it arches over the esophagus, it causes a certain amount of compression of the esophageal lumen. And the third area where foreign body can get lodged happens to be the lower esophageal sphincter. I want you people to know these things very clearly because this question is commonly asked. They will ask you what are all the common areas where foreign body can be impacted in the esophagus. So, if, we, if they say if they want to know the common areas of impaction of foreign body in the oropharynx, you can say it you can include the pyriform fossa, you can include the 
crack of pharynx. If they ask you only esophagus, you can start from the crack of pharynx which happens to be the upper esophageal sphincter, the middle of the esophagus which is normally narrowed by compression of the compression caused by the arch of the aorta and the third happens to be the narrowing at the level of the lower esophageal sphincter. So, these are the common areas of narrowing in the esophagus. If you want to include the hypopharynx, hypopharynx area also, the piriform fossa happens to be the commonest area where foreign bodies can be intentionally or unintentionally uh, log, get lodged. Intentionally means it happens in prisoners, it happens in smugglers, they tend to hide their contraband into the pyriform fossa. It can be done by just pushing the finger, pushing the object with the index finger so that it will be reaching the pyriform fossa easily. Excuse me. So, the next uh, topic we are going to cover is actually the common causes and types of foreign body. So, what are all the common causes of foreign body? The common causes of foreign body or the patients who commonly uh, come to the uh, ENT surgeon seeking attention. Uh, with history of foreign body ingestion happens to be the curious children rather toddlers and then patients who are alcoholic so in the whom in their alcoholic stupor wouldn't have swallowed the mutton piece they have just gulped the mutton piece and it would have got stuck in the cricopharynx area the third happens to be a hungry patient supposing the patient happens to be really hungry and what happens is when the hungry patient when they try to start eating in a hurry so they won't uh, chew their food properly so the mutton piece unchewed or partially chewed mutton piece gets stuck in the cricopharynx area old age is again a big problem because old age they tend to wear dentures and they tend to sleep at inop uh, inopportune moments so uh, while they are sleeping in a, uh, during the daytime what happens is they won't remove the denture so what happens when they sleep with their mouth open the denture is likely to slip into the oropharynx and get stuck into the cricopharynx area so that is the most dangerous foreign body uh, the denture will get stuck to the cricopharynx and then next comes the malignant structure of the esophagus. The malignant lesions in the esophagus can cause narrowing and normal food particles can get impacted in the malignant uh, narrowing, malignant structure or the malignant mass present in the esophagus. And the presence of esophageal web can cause narrowing wherein food particles can get impacted. I have already told you psychiatric patients have a notorious habit of putting all sorts of things into the mouth. I have even removed a blade from the blade. I have removed a scissors from the uh, oral cavity on a cricopharynx area of uh, psychiatric patient. They have managed to swallow a scissor. They have managed to swallow a blade. Fortunately, uh, we were able to intervene on time and remove it. But this is commonly seen. So, what are these are all the types of foreign bodies which you commonly encounter. So, when you take an x-ray, whenever you are suspecting a foreign body in a child, you always include neck along with the chest. Then only you will get the entire uh, view of the foreign body. This is actually a coin. So, this child has come with a coin. So, there is a small uh, uh, tip here. You see a coin here. This is actually x-ray chest and neck both taken together. If they keep an x-ray like this in your uh, orals, they will ask you where exactly the foreign body is. So, by seeing this x-ray, they will ask you, can you, can you tell us for sure where the foreign body is? So, you can say that here you are seeing the face on view of the coin. This is actually a round shadow. This uh, round shadow is actually shows its face straight on you. So, this face on view of the coin in the normal AP view of the chest shows that this coin is present at the level of the cricopharynx and it is not in the airway. If it is present because esophageal entry is horizontally slit. Let me tell you esophagus is opening is horizontally slit. 
whereas the tracheal entry is vertically slit. So, when you when the coin slides into the horizontally slit esophagus, what is likely to happen is you will be seeing the entire face of the coin. Whereas, if the coin slits into the slides into the airway into the larynx, what is likely to happen is the entry of the larynx happens to be vertically slit. So, you will be seeing the end on view of the coin like this. Here you see the end on view of the coin. So, in the lateral view, you will be seeing the end on view of the coin if the foreign body is at the level of the cricopharynx. Whereas, in the lateral view, if you see the face on view here, like this, if you see a round one, not like the end on view, the face on view, if you see the face on view here, it shows the foreign body is in the glottis area. So, this important tip you should know, I repeat again, the esophagus is slit horizontally. So, when the coin is sliding into the esophagus, it has to slide with its longest la longest dimension horizontally. Whereas, when it slides into the larynx, it will slide with the longest dimension placed vertically. So, that is a, that is the reason why you see the end on view on AP, view, AP x ray of the uh, chest when the foreign body namely the coin is in the uh, foot passage and if you see the end on view in the AP view then it indicates the foreign body is at the level of the laryngeal inlet. So, this foreign body is actually a button cell. This is a deadly foreign body. I have already told you it causes lot of problem because the acid from the button cell has a tendency to diffuse out and uh, erode cause ulcers in the mucosal lining of the esophagus. So, as early as possible you should remove the button uh, cells if the child has swallowed the button cell. So, the types of foreign body includes could be a coin, can be mutton piece or food impacted food, it can be batteries, it can be sharp metallic objects like safety pin. So, that is also another common problem which we encounter. And the, yes, if they join late, what can I do, man? 10.15, we, I was waiting till 10.15. What is the point in me waiting till 10.15 and don't bother to join? Na? It shows the amount of interest. If they want to join only for the sake of attendance, I don't mind giving attendance. Okay. If they want attendance, I don't mind giving them the attendance. I want, I am here teaching you something. They should have joined 10 minutes earlier. That is the interest they show. I will go to the investigation. Actually, you can take a x-ray soft tissue neck AP and lateral view. Here, this is actually the soft tissue neck lateral view showing the presence of coin here. So, you see the end on view of the coin. I have already told you. This is the end on view of the coin because the coin is in the foot passage. So, this is stuck at the level of the cricopharynx. This is the end on view of the coin. This is the face on view of the coin. So, same patient you take a x-ray chest, you see the coin straight on you, it's face on view. And here if you take a lateral view, it shows the end on view. So, these two pictures are from the same patient. So, the coin is present at the level of the cricopharynx at the foot passage. So, when you see a coin, in the AP view, when you see the coin straight at your face, giving it, giving you a face on view, it shows that uh, the coin is in the level of the cricopharynx. And if you take a lateral view of the neck, it will show you a end on view. You see the slit here. I think you should be seeing my cursor. I am pointing out the coin. This is actually the end on view of the coin. Here, this is this picture shows the lateral view of the soft tissue of the neck, which shows the presence of a foreign body, radiopaque foreign body, most probably the shape resembles a denture. So, this is how denture will present. So, th this can be identified by the, this is actually the prevertebral area. So, increased prevertebral space. The thickness of the prevertebral space is increased here. How will you say the thickness of the prevertebral space is increased? So, this is the corresponding vertebra. So, if the prevertebral space is larger than half of the corresponding vertebra, there is definitely a increase in the prevertebral space volume. So, this is the enlargement of the prevertebral space area. This is the foreign body and this is the corresponding vertebra. Obviously, you see the prevertebral space is as uh, thicker as the corresponding vertebral size and then there is the normal spine shows a little bit of frontal lordosis. Here there is a certain amount of straightening of the spine. 
cervical spine. So the features of foreign body at the level of the cricofarynx include the prevertebral shadow widening, that is number one. Number two is straightening of the cervical spine. These are the two features which you see in the lateral view, soft tissue neck lateral view, which shows the radiopaque foreign body could be seen here and there is prevertebral soft tissue widening. Obviously, how will you come, how will you say the prevertebral soft tissue is widened when the prevertebral soft tissue soft tissue area is more than half the size of the corresponding vertebra more than half the size of the corresponding vertebra so that is what you see here and then here you see a small screw stuck into the right main bronchus incidentally even though today's topic is not uh, uh, foreign body in the airway still i show you this picture because you should be able to identify these x-rays in your exam so this is when you see a foreign body like this push to one side. So, it goes without saying this screw is lodged in the right main bronchus. Here, this is another foreign body where the tracheostomy flange has broken and then it has slid into the left main bronchus. So, you see that broken tracheostomy flange here. These are some of the foreign bodies which are commonly encountered. These are the foreign bodies which I managed to remove in my practice. I have removed quite a few, but these are some of the most interesting ones I am showing. So, next is actually the investigations. So, what all investigations you perform in these patients? One is you need to take a x-ray chest. This is actually not to diagnose the foreign body alone. You should know whether the child or the adult is fit enough for anesthesia, general anesthesia. And then to diagnose a foreign body, you need to take x-ray, cervical spine, AP and lateral view. And then this x-ray cervical spine also will tell you if you are going to remove a denture from an old man, if the uh, ma patient is having cervical spondylosis, you need to be very careful when you do a rigid esophagoscopy to remove the foreign body because cervical spondylosis can cause fracture of the cervical spine and the patient may uh, die of cord compression. So, you should know, you should look out for the degree of spondylosis by, by taking x-ray of the cervical spine. You need to take a x-ray, I mean sorry, ECG all leads and you need to take a blood routine. These are just nothing to get the, just for anesthetic purposes, just to know whether the patient is fit for anesthesia, you do all these investigations. And then let us go to the esophagoscopy. So, esophagoscopy is of two types depending on the type of scope used. Commonly, we use the rigid one for all foreign body removal, rigid esophagus, rigid esophagoscopy is the best. I repeat again for sake of removal of foreign body, only rigid esophagus should be used because it is easy to remove a foreign body using rigid esophagus. This flexible esophagus will help you to suck out the secretions. You can do a small take out a small biopsy from suspicious lesions. All these things you can use a flexible nasopharyngeal esophagus scope. So, here this will help you in the diagnosis. This helps you in the treatment. So, what are all the indications for esophagus scoping? The first indication happens to be the removal of foreign body. The second indication is to examine the entire esophagus from the upper end to the lower end and look for any suspicious lesions. And if you see any suspicious lesions, you should take biopsy from these lesions. And then if there are any strictures of the esophagus, if it is a benign stricture, if you are sure it is a benign stricture, you can use esophagoscopy to dilate the narrowed portion of the esophagoscope. And then Next is the treatment of a pharyngeal pouch. If the patient is having a pharyngeal pouch, the separating wall of the pouch, which the wall that separates the pouch from the esophagus can be sectioned uh, using a esophagus, esophagoscope approach. So, these are all the important indications for esophagoscopy. Let me repeat again. The indications for esophagoscopy include removal of foreign body, then examination of the uh, esophageal mucosa for suspicious looking lesion and to take biopsy from these lesions and then to perform dilatation of benign structures of the esophagus. And then last but not the least is to treat patients with pharyngeal pouch by removing the separating wall between the esophagus and the pharyngeal pouch. Now, I will advise all of you if at all you want to do uh, esophagoscopy. Uh, to remove a foreign body, 
be it airway or be it in the gastrointestinal tract, then you always perform this procedure, it's better performed rather, safely performed rather under general anesthesia. Because the general anesthesia gives adequate relaxation of the keratopharynx muscle so that your scope can pass easily, can navigate that narrow portion of the gastrointestinal tract easily because the general anesthesia causes adequate amount of relaxation of the keratopharynx muscle. So, initially you topical uh, anesthesia is uh, performed first by uh, spraying the old, entire oral cavity by 4 percent the can spray and then you can uh, block the pyriform fossa by placing a gauze impregnated with 4 percent xylacan and uh, putting it in the holding it in the fire pyriform fossa for some time so it will anesthetize the entire area Ta you can perform a esophagoscopy using this topical anesthesia this is actually for the completion sake i am telling you you can also perform esophagoscopy under local anesthesia you you can use 4 percent xylacan spray and pyriform fossa block to anesthetize the area and you can do the esophagoscopy as i told you this needs a lot of practice this needs uh, a cooperative patient on the other hand, an apprehensive patient will not cooperate and the crack of pharynx will never open when you put the, when you pass, when you attempt to pass the esophagoscope. So, it is always better to perform this procedure under general anesthesia. If you are so keen, if you are very particular that you need to do this procedure under local anesthesia, then you can use a topical 4 percent xylacan spray and then associate it with a pyriform fossa block using again the 4 percent xylacan impregnated gauze. General anesthesia is actually reserved and used commonly for removal of impacted foreign body. Pre-medications IDD given to dry out the entire oral cavity of its secretion. So, you can uh, use glycopyrrolate injection in the dose of 0.2 milligram intramuscularly and then it is ideally given as a pre-medication say ideally is a half an hour before the surgical procedure. So, this prevents excessive secretion in the throat. And then Fortwin again, one ampule of Fortwin is given administered intramuscularly. This will reduce the apprehension of the patient uh, before the anesthesia is induced. So, what are the instruments you use for the esophagoscopy? So, you I have already told you the otolaryngologists they prefer to use a rigid esophagoscope uh, to remove foreign body. The rigid esophagoscope is of two types. One is the Negus, the other is the Jackson. These two types differ in the type of illumination. Negus is actually, the, in this esophagoscope, the Negus illumina the illumination is at the proximal end of the esophagus. So, what happens is, the scope has an illumination close to the surgeon. So, in the Negus type of esophagoscope, the illumination is at the proximal end of the esophagoscope. Biggest disadvantage is, the illumination tip is at the far away from the site of lesion. So, you won't be able to see the entire esophagus in its brightness. You won't see the uh, entire esophagus with full lighting. Whereas, Jackson type what happens is the illumination is distally. So, it is at the distal end of the esophagus scope. So, the illumination of the target area is really bright and you will be able to see very clearly if you use a uh, Jackson's type of esophagus scope. But the problem is the secretions can soil the light uh, cold light cable and the cold light tip thereby the light could appear dim because of the soiling effect of the secretions in the oral cavity and esophagus. So, you need to constantly remove the scope, wipe the scope and then reintroduce that is one of the problems with Jackson's type of esophagus scope. But commonly used uh, esophagus scope nowadays is the Jackson's type with distal illumination. And then I have already told you flexible esophagoscope is usually used for diagnostic purposes and very rarely they manage to remove a foreign body like a coin uh, by using a specially designed forceps. But I will not advise you to use a flexible esophagoscope for foreign body removal. It is only for diagnostic and biopsy purposes. Now, before you start uh, performing esophagoscopy, you need to put a, put the patient in a unique position. This position goes by the name boy's position. So, this is again another question which is commonly asked in your orals. So, the position of the patient 
while you perform esophagoscopy happens to be boys position in this position the patient lies supine with a ring below the head the ring is placed below the head the neck is actually flexed and the head is extended the atlanta occipital joint I repeat again in boys position a small ring is placed below the head of the patient the neck of the patient is flexed and the head is extended at the atlanta occipital joint so what have, why this position is very important is this position straightens the oral cavity along with the it makes it in line with the esophagus so this position straightens the oral cavity and makes it to form a line with the esophagus entry of the esophagus so when you pass, attempt to pass a scope your scope will directly pass into the esophagus and it won't go into the airway so this position is very important namely the boys position i repeat again the in boys position the neck is actually flexed and the patient uh, a small ring is be placed below the head of the patient and the head is extended at the atlanta occipital joint so now i am going to show you what happens is here we are going to remove a foreign body a denture which this lady has swallowed so anesthesia has been given using the endotracheal tube so i am passing this is actually a distal illumination you saw the light inside the oral cavity i am passing a rigid esophagoscope it is ideal to have anesthetist by the side of you two pairs of eyes are always better than one so they will also keep a watch on what is happening you will see the importance of having another pair of eyes by the side of you in this video that is the reason why i am showing you this video i am applying suction through the esophagoscope the patient is put in the boys position the secretions are cleared by applying suction because of the presence of foreign body the patient will be hypersalivating so whatever amount of pre medication you give the oral cavity is not going to be fully dry so the scope is passed gently every time the lumen of the scope should be seen the lumen of the scope should be visualized always you should not pass the scope blindly the scope should be passed directly under visualization on seeing the foreign body you use a alligator forceps to remove this needs lot of practice doesn't come in a single day the crack of pharynx is not uh, opening it is fully closed there is crack of pharynx spasm now i ask the anesthetist to give some more muscle relaxant which is giving now i am putting i have identified visualize a foreign body rather now i will be using the alligator forceps to hold the foreign body and the, let me tell you the denture is not going to come out through the lumen of this small uh, scope i will have to disinfect the foreign body and remove the foreign body along with the scope so i need to withdraw the scope at the same time i should keep the hold of the foreign body intact so while i withdraw the foreign body also should come with the scope so what has happened is the scope has, the foreign body has slipped into the oral cavity so i i thought maybe the foreign body is still there inside the crack of pharynx i am attempting the scope now the anesthetist is pointing that the foreign body is actually inside the oral cavity it has come out into the oral cavity so now i will be removing the foreign body from the oral cavity so that is the advantage of having two pairs of eyes inside the theater than one so always better to have another person who will keep a watch over you so it is inside the oral cavity it has got it disinfected and it has come into the oral cavity now you see the denture being delivered out of the oral cavity it's a huge denture so the denture has been successfully removed so this video i am showing you just to show that removal of foreign body that to denture 
is no joke. It takes lot of practice. See, such a big foreign body was removed. So, this video clipping has shown you the removal of foreign body. Now, let me give out the various complications of uh, ease of scopy. While you attempt to do a scopy, you can cause inadvertently, you can perforate the esophagus, you can cause injury to the lips, you can cause injury to the teeth, gums, you can traumatize the cervical spine, you can cause fracture of the cervical spine, thereby leading on to compression. And if the patient is having an aortic aneurysm, you can cause rupture of the aortic aneurysm, leading on to instantaneous death on the table.